Hello everyone, welcome to the Colour Cave. My name's Gem and I like to play with art stuff. I'd also like to welcome you back to another Colouring for Beginners video. It is a series that I have been running since the beginning of my channel back in March and I felt it was time to start building the collection up. So if you are brand spanking new to colouring or you're just looking to improve your colouring pages, you are in the right place. If this is the first video in the series that you have seen, I'm going to put a link up in the card to one of the other videos just for fun and I'll put a full list in the description that will take you to um, all the different videos in the series up till now. What we're going to look at today is six textures that you can put into your colouring pages that are really simple, really straightforward and really quick. And it'll just bring that extra bit of pop to your pages that we're all looking for all the time. I'm just gonna grab everything I need, which is <laughs> none of these things, and we'll switch to top down view and then we can get going. All of these techniques are really easy and straightforward to do. There is nothing complicated about any of them. And the idea is to give people that are new to colouring a chance to add a little bit of detail and something that's a little bit more exciting to their pictures without too much skill or too much pressure. I do recommend that you try out these textures on scrap paper, have a wee practice before you jump in and put them into your colouring page. It's not that there's anything complicated about them, as I've said, but with everything else, practice makes perfect. So all of the techniques only use a couple of pencils and that just make, makes everything a bit easier. A note before we start, when it comes to adding the detail for the texture, it's important to have a nice sharp pencil because that is going to give you defining lines and you'll see what I mean when we get started. So the first one that we are going to look at is really, really simple. Now, quite often, if you have a colouring page, let's just say we've got a, a colouring page here and you've got a lovely picture and it's got lots of trees and, you know, there's, you know, sunset or whatever and there's some, some flowers, all that kind of thing. See, I should be drawing colouring books. <laughs> But quite often you'll have some detail like this and then you have the horizon and the ground and there is an expanse in this space here where there's just nothing. And I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes I'm loath to colour this all in, even at a gradient. Um, I just think it's, it can be quite dull and quite boring. So we're going to remedy that right now real quick. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to take three shades of green, one light, one medium and one dark. It doesn't matter what they are at this stage. You can be more picky depending on your picture. And we want to have some nice sharp points. Now, when you have a situation like this where you've got this sort of wide expanse, you can think about this as like framing a picture. You've got the edge of your page and one simple thing that you can really do, particularly in a landscape, is that you can add in some grass in this foreground just to give it a bit of interest and a bit of depth. And all we are doing here is the flick. It is that simple. So take your first colour, it doesn't matter what colour your first colour is, and just start at one corner or slightly up the side, depending on how much space you have surrounding that picture. And all we want to do is an upward motion and make them varying lengths and make them go in slightly different directions. And we're just gonna do that all the way along. And if you keep turning your pencil as you go, it'll help you keep that nice sharp point that you've just spent ages trying to get, especially if you've got Prismacolors and they keep breaking. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. Once you've done that, you can move to your next color. I'm going to my lighter green. Now just by varying the length and the direction of the strokes it just gives it a bit more of an organic feel and feel free to do them in clumps you know if you prefer tufts if you don't want to frame the whole picture and then in with your darkest color oh in with your darkest color and just keep that nice sort of flicky motion because what that does is it gives you a thicker stem at the bottom, which is where you're starting, and it tapers away, which if you've ever looked at a blade of grass, which I'm sure you have, it resembles it very closely. Now, you can keep going until you have a, a sort of required thickness of your, your grass. <laughs> um, so you can just keep going until you're happy. So once you've done a sort of a once over, you can stop and, you know, eyeball it, take a step back and decide if you want more or less or whatever. Now at this stage, 
if you like the way it's, it's looking, but you don't really want to add any more in, but you're still quite bald at the bottom, take your mid-tone and if you just very lightly shade in at the very bottom there and just gently sort of let up on the pressure as you get higher up towards your the top of your, your little blades of grass, then you can sort of give that illusion of it being thicker without actually having to sit and add in more flicks. Like that. So there you go, that is a really easy way to add some texture in. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, you can always add in uh, a little flower at the top of one of your, your stems to colour in if you're feeling artsy. Um, failing that though, it gives a nice effect, but as you can see there, it just gives a bit of definition and a bit of depth because it's very obvious that this is in the foreground and then you still have that space from your horizon line, but it's less for you to colour. And if you do want to colour it in, you can do. Um, it's entirely up to yourself. Even if you just wanted to add in a sort of hint of whatever's going on. If you're pressing lightly with your pencil, you can go down almost on top of those blades and it's not going to take away from the effect any so there you go really straightforward really simple so let's label this just in case anybody doesn't get what it is grass Alrighty then so that is number one okay the next texture we're going to look at employs a similar technique and all i'm going to do here is just draw a, a rough outline So this could be whatever you want it to be, but clearly it is an animal. I'm not going to take too much time over that. So I have got three brown pencils here. Again, I've got a light, a medium and a dark. It doesn't matter what it is for me right now, but I do have nice sharp points. And all we're going to do is exactly the same as we have done with our grass, but we're going to alter the direction of the strokes in order to create a fur-like texture. So uh, some people will fill in a background first, a very light layer of maybe their lightest colour, depending on what colour they want their animal to be. Um, you, It's entirely up to yourself and it very much depends on what it is you're actually colouring. For example here, if you were going to look at the way that the fur goes, you have to think about the direction that it is growing in on an animal. Now you can use reference pictures on Google or if you're lucky enough to have a furry friend at home, you can always go to them for reference. And basically it's just the same thing. Now at the top, of uh, an animal's head. They generally have, if they're longer haired, they tend to have little tufts that stick up. So that is exactly the same flicky motion that I was just doing. And it's in the same direction because we're going top to bottom. And all I'm using is my three pencils there to give them some hair. It's that straightforward. When you're working on the body, then you want to be working in the direction that the fur's going to go. So in this case, down the head and down the back of the neck, it'll go in this direction. And you just want to work between your three colours and build that up. Now you want this to be quite dense. So it's important that you take your time over it and just keep working up and build up layers of that fur. Now, obviously it very much depends on what type of animal it is, what the hair's actually going to look like. So this is one of these ones where you perhaps need to experiment a bit and just have a go, but it is exactly the same motion. Now you can see I'm bringing these in at the sides because my little animal, whatever it is, clearly doesn't have any fur sticking, <laughs> sticking out there. But again, you can use your artistic license. There's nothing to say that you can't make it stick out if that's what you want. If I was doing the back of ears, I would tend to have it all going in the same direction and the strokes would be a little bit finer because we all know that the hair across an animal's ears tends to be a lot shorter unless they have big hairy ears like a spaniel or you know something like that but you get the gist of it but as long as you keep using those flicky motions and you make sure that you keep your pencil sharp 
you can build this up and build this up now if you feel like you don't have the patience or the time to keep doing this you can go back in with that lighter color and you can just build up the color in behind you can leave a little bit of white as well if that's what you want to do that is entirely up to you but you can just keep going with that as well if you prefer and over the course of an entire animal that's going to give you a nice texture to work with and just make it a little bit more interesting bear in mind that the shorter the animal's hair is the shorter the strokes should be so you know you you may be you may be looking at strokes like this and building oh throwing pencils away and just building them up on a very small scale which will give you a much smoother coated animal and you can keep the strokes really close together and that will give that illusion of thicker you know a thicker tighter coat like this so that's something for you to play about with and again really simple really straightforward and not really any different from doing the grass the third one that I have for you again I'm going to draw myself a a nice little colouring picture here we'll maybe make it the same as this one I don't know my tree well, let's have the sun in the corner like you used to do when you were a kid Okay, um, for this one, uh, you really only need one pencil in my eyes, but you may, um, again, it depends on what colours you want to put in. If you have some ground that you need to colour in and you're not sure what to do with it, you can get a really simple stone effect. If you just lightly take whatever colour it is you want your ground to be and uh, just sort of fill it in very, very lightly to begin with. Again, it's one of these ones, you can go back over it, that's why we all love pencils. Just get some base colour down there. And it's actually better to have a slightly more blunt pencil for this, um, just because you'll see less of your pencil lines as you go and you won't have to go over it a squillion times. And then after that, you want to sharpen it up a little bit. You don't need a really pointy point for this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in little circles, but I'm gonna press a little bit so that they, so that you can see them. You can actually see the outline so that they're defined slightly. And that gives you a really easy sort of cobbled effect. Now you can do them in little patches like I'm doing here. Um, you know, have them sort of in behind each other and all that sort of idea. If you want to give that just an impression of it. If, if your picture's quite busy, you might not want to fill in the whole section or the whole area with that. But you've got the background colour there. And what that does is that gives you um, a bit of cohesiveness. So the the brain will tell the eye that although you've only drawn in these little circles every now and then because it's in an area where everything's the same color the brain will accept that 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 is the texture of what of that area of the picture if you have a slightly more simplistic picture and you are looking to add interest you can just go to town and you can fill the whole thing in you don't need to be careful about it and if you vary your pressure with the circles as you're going, you know, do some light, some heavy, overlap them. Don't be too careful about it because it is supposed to be quite random. But you can fill in the whole area relatively quickly. And again, it's one of those ones, If you see if you have a practice a few times just on, you know, a, a scrap piece of paper in a little box like this, you'll soon be quick enough to cover a reasonably large area quite quickly without too much effort on your own part. Now... I'm just going to finish this off. You can see I'm making quite quick progress here. And that gives you a nice sort of um, stony or cobbled pebbles, whatever. You know, you can change the size of them to suit whatever it is you're, you're colouring in. So you've done that and you decide, mm, do you know what, That's that might be a bit too much or mm, it looks a bit too, too amateurish. You can go back over with your pencil and you can just make it more subtle and you can see just by going back over that that some of the circles are disappearing completely i.e the lighter ones that i've put in but you can still see some of the darker lines that i've that i've added in and that's why i wanted to go lightly on the the, the first go over before i started drawing the circles in so there you go that's quite a nice texture that can work on walls and things as well
The other thing that you can do as well is if you are looking to make it a bit more interesting or a bit more intricate, then you can take a different colour. Um, that first colour that I used, oh, Mr. James back in his tractor. <laughs> did you hear all that? I'm sure you did. Um, the first colour I used was uh, a warm grey from the Polychromos range. And I've got dark sepia here. And uh, you can just, being a bit more careful, you can pick out certain areas and just really like accents if you like with a different colour. Again it's just to add a little bit of interest if you've got a particularly stark background and again it just takes two minutes and you know that it, it makes it look a bit more three-dimensional as well because those stones look as if they're sitting up off the surface a little bit because they're that wee bit darker. So there we go, that is another way that you can deal with that. This is one that I've seen quite a lot and before I start I would just like to say that if you want to do this one in more detail, uh, Claire ED over at Colour with Claire has an excellent tutorial. We're going to do a quick simple version okay, and this is brickwork. So the first thing you want to do is take a pencil and a ruler. It's really, you can do this freehand, but it's not gonna look as good. And very, very lightly in whatever area it is that you're working in, you want to draw lines that are reasonably equidistant from each other. If you want to measure them out, that's great. I'm just eyeballing this. I'm quite confident in my, my uh, eyeballing abilities for the purposes of this. And the other thing, if you've ever looked at brick walls, is that you'll notice that in each row, the bricks overlap. So if I draw in my first set here, again, the, these vertical lines don't need to be quite so precise and you'll see why in a moment. But the, they always overlap with each other and that's to improve the sturdiness of the wall. So I'm just working my way along. And again, they don't have to be exact. They don't have to be perfect. It's not a big deal, really. But that gives you your rough framework to work to. Now, what you want to do after that is pick the colours that you're going to use. So I am going to pick out a nice red colour for my bricks. And I have to decide on a colour for the mortar in between. So I'm going dark. Some people prefer to go lighter. If that's the case, when you're drawing out your bricks with your ruler, use the lighter colour to draw out your outline and all we're going to do is we are going to draw our mortar in following the lines that we've drawn down so again if you've done it in lighter pencil keep using your lighter pencil and all we're doing is we're going to thicken these up a little bit and they don't need to be poker straight because again in between bricks it, it isn't usually like that and when we do these downward strokes we're going to thicken them up and then we're going to make them into a slight hourglass shape just by adding in a little bit at each corner like that to make almost like a triangle shape. Now what that's doing is that is giving a, a bit of shape to our bricks. Now you can see there it's making the corners of the brick look a little bit rounded. So all we're going to do is we're going to do that all the way along. So just thicken up the lines that you've already drawn and then add in these little bits like this. Now, I'm not being precise here because brickwork is very rarely that uniform unless it is one of these sort of modern brick textures that you see on, you know, in people's kitchen walls. It's usually much more precise. But I'm thinking more of like out, outside masonry type brick walls here. <laughs> Again, if you do want to do that, though, you can use a ruler and a really sharp pencil and make it really neat. And... Um, you know, very, very precise. If you want that cleaner look, that's absolutely fine. So I'll just add all this in. I like doing things like this. This is fun. It kind of takes you away from, you know, the... Not, not that it's a chore at all, that's the wrong thing to say, but sometimes you can get a bit caught up in trying to figure out colour combinations or, you know, getting your gradients right or your blending right. And this can be a, a nice little aside just to, you know, make it a bit more interesting in whatever it is you're doing. I always think it's good fun. And I'm always quite pleased with the results as well. It's quite satisfying when you've created something yourself, especially if your picture's pretty to start with, which obviously all of them are, otherwise we wouldn't colour them in at all, would we? So I'm just using medium, medium pressure when I do this. That'll depend on the pencils that you're using and how much you want 
it to, to pop out. Oh, got, got a bit carried away with myself on that one. Okay, so that, that's you. You have your brick shape. And that's looking pretty good. It looks quite tidy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take my brick colour, which for me is like a reddish brown colour. And using the side of the pencil, I'm just going to fill in each brick. I'm not being too careful about how I'm colouring because bricks are very porous. Uh, they have a lot of holes and dimples and imperfections in them. And that's really where the texture part is going to come in. So I'm just basically wanting that base layer of colour down. Just to make it a bit more... A bit more interesting and, you know, add a bit of... Um, a bit of contrast, a few wee contours. Really, really straightforward. So you can see, I mean, so far, the, the most effort you've had to do is make your little hourglass shapes. It's not... It's nothing particularly taxing. Okay, dokie. So now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around some of my edges. Now, I'm not going to do this in all the bricks on all the sides. I'm just going to do it here and there. And again, it's to sort of highlight the irregularities in the brick. It's just like a corner here and there or a side. And that's, again, that is entirely up to yourself. If you want to do all the bricks all the way around, then by all means, feel free. It depends on what kind of look you want to go for. I'm kind of going for almost a, a sort of distressed look here, I think. I think that's where we're going with this anyway. My hand seems to be telling me that that's what's happening. And my brain concurs. <laughs> so you just work your way round. And again, at this point, you don't need a super sharp pencil because if you use a slightly blunter tip, it's just going to soften the edges a little bit. They're not going to pop out as much. And when you're adding in something like this round the sides, you know, that, that can be a good thing because it's just really an accent that you're wanting to add in. Now, you can spend as long as you like working away in this. If you want to blend these edges out, then, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to do that. I think that's quite a nice way to do it. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm just keeping my point the same, which isn't particularly sharp. It's not blunt, but it's not pointy pointy. And I'm just going to work my way across and I'm just going to add in some little flecks and some scribbles and squiggles. And this is really just to give the, the you know the bricks some sort of texture and I'm just doing this at random I'm not pressing really heavily because I don't if I press heavily I'll show you on this one here then it just looks like someone's drawn a pencil line on your brick someone's been drawn on your bricks so trying to keep it quite light it doesn't matter if you've got the odd one that stands out a little bit that's absolutely fine it's not going to take away from your picture but if you have something like this the eye is going to be drawn to it and generally with things like this unless it is the focal point of your piece then you're not really going to want that so we're trying to trying to avoid any harsh lines here as much as possible bar the odd one or two which is absolutely fine we don't mind that at all one of the funny things I find about doing this brick texture is inadvertently you always end up drawing a smiley face and you don't realise you've done it. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got some of that texture in, I'm going to do what I did with the pebbles and I'm just lightly using the side of my pencil and note where I'm holding the pencil. It's really, really far up. And I'm just going to go back over that just to help smooth out some of those textures that we've put in. And again, just a light layer, not really paying a huge amount of care and attention to what I'm doing. But that also helps to add depth of the actual colour that you're using to your bricks because you don't want wishy-washy bricks, really. So I'll just do that all the way along. See, guys, not rocket science. Not at all. makes that a bit mellower. Now you can see there the, the mark that I made that was really heavy and I kind of did one accidentally down here. It still sticks out like a sore thumb. So that's why you don't want really sharp hard lines. There you go. So that gives you a nice brick effect that you can use in sections of your backgrounds perhaps. 
as I said, Colour With Claire has done a full tutorial. I think she did a whole page. I haven't seen the video, I, I mean, as in I haven't watched it all the way through, but I did see that she had done a video and I'm assuming she goes into much greater detail than that. But that's a simple way for you to do a brick wall if you're wanting to get started. Okay, another popular one is uh, wood texture. And again, this is something that it can be really straightforward or you can make it really complicated if that's what you want to do. I'm just going to draw myself a, a, a wee box here. It's a slightly um, skew if box, but in the interests of not taking ages to do things, I'm not that bothered. Once again, uh, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino, she has an excellent tutorial on doing wood backgrounds and it's quite in depth and the results are absolutely stunning. It is a bit more complicated than what I'm going to show you. Feel free to check that out. I personally love her videos, I think they're amazing. But this is just a, a sort of quicker, simpler method. So what you want to do is you want to pick a couple of woody type colours and I think I'm going to stick with my fur colours from earlier, um, just for ease of whatever. So what you want to do is first of all pick the background colour for your wood. So I have this lovely shade of yellowish brown here which is, if anyone's interested, brown ochre. <laughs> Someone did say to me in one of the colouring groups on Facebook they love the way I say ochre. That is how it's pronounced. I am Scottish. Anything that is ch has a ch sound and not a ch sound or a k sound. So yes, ochre. Like loch. Almost the same word. <laughs> okay, so once you're happy with the, the vibrancy and the number of layers you've got in your background, if you can, if possible, try and go with the way that you want the grain of your wood to go. So I'm going to have my planks running this way, so most of my pencil strokes are back and forth. Again, that's one of those ones where you don't have to have it perfectly smooth because it's just going to add to the texture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my darker brown, which is nougat, and I'm going to draw in my planks. This is one of these things where if you're confident, you can eyeball it. If not, just use a ruler. It's absolutely fine. Because I've got slightly skew with dimensions here, I'm just going to eyeball it. And to do that, I'm going to turn this slightly to the side. The main thing that you want to do when you're doing this is use a reasonably light hand but you want to make sure that the gaps between your planks are as regular as possible, which is why using a ruler is always a good idea. Now that was never gonna happen for me, as I say, because my box is slightly wonky because I didn't draw it with a ruler. But that gives you your guidelines for your planks. Now, once you're happy, you can go back over them because we want them to, to be reasonably prominent, but put them down lightly first. That way, if you make a mistake, it's easy enough for you to fix. Okay, and really all we want to do, when you're working in tight spaces like this, you're not gonna do anything intricate. If you have a larger space, I strongly suggest going and looking at Peter Hewitt's tutorial. So I was, I was waving at one of our, uh, our farm workers there, that's him away home, I was just waving out the window on his way past. Oh wow, sorry guys. Anyway, yes, so when you're working in confined spaces, you want to give that impression a bit like we did with the pebbles rather than actually sitting and working on a wood grain. So what we want to do is go with whatever way your grain's going and just using your darker pencil, just add in some lines like this. And you can maybe have an odd sort of wiggly one. And at the edges, you can use your flicky motion again like this, just to make it a bit more, a bit more realistic. So you've got your planks at the end of your, the corners of your box, should I say, just like this, to sharpen my pencil up a little bit here. Now when you're doing your lines of the wood grain, it is good to have a, a sharper pencil because they, they will, um, they will stand out more. And I'm just using a really light hand going back and forth the direction of the grain. And see, maybe maybe have a wiggly line in there every now and then just to make it a bit more interesting. And you can do that. Bring some in from the outside if that's what you want. And there you go, you have a wood effect without too much hassle. And again, that's one of these ones that you can add into small sections in the pictures. 
you know if there is a door for example you can put that on and it's not overpowering the rest of your drawing but it's a bit more interesting than just having plain smooth colours all the time. If you have a 3D object like this and you're going up round the side you want to follow these lines when you're putting your planks in. So again I'm just going to whack down a quick layer of colour here, I'm not going to labour over this. So you want to follow this line down here at the angle that it's at when you draw in your planks. So it's important that you keep that angle the same because that determines the perspective and gives the object its 3D shape. So that's quite important that you do that. And you can just do the same thing again. And all I'm doing is taking my, my little flicks down the side here, like so. There you go. And then I'm gonna add in some light lines. like this and maybe think oh that's that's a little bit dark you know they, they're standing out a bit too much but you can go back over again with your background color and just smooth it out a little bit if you feel as if those details are too much and that is a really simple wood texture for you to use wood Ta da Okie dokie, the last one is by far my absolute favourite. I have, I'm, I'm a big fan of this one, it's, it's good. So, what we're going to look at now is cracks and splits. Now that sounds uh, a bit suspicious, but I, pro I promise you it's not. On a wall or even on the ground, you know, if you're thinking about dry earth that hasn't had any rain, there are often cracks and you know it's a bit uneven and that kind of thing or thinking about like crumbling plaster on a wall that sort of idea so once again once you've decided on your background color and you've got maybe a layer or two of that down take a darker color and i would tend to use blacks and browns and greys for this sort of thing but it does depend on what color your background is if it's yellow for example you might want to go into oranges and browns but the idea is to have the same thing, have a have the background as your lightest tone and then you want a mid-tone and a dark tone. So just because I've been using the same pencils, um, I, that's my mid-tone and the dark sepia is my darkest tone. So I've used this one here for my background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same pencil and I'm just going to draw a series of straight lines. So we're going to draw little lines like this. Again, medium pressure. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to go round in a rough circle. When I say circle, I use that term very, very loosely. <laughs> Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw more little lines off some of these corners. And then I'm just going to start spidering them out. And all I'm doing is using really short strokes. I mean, it's nothing... There's nothing complicated about it. There is such a thing as having a line of, <laughs> of pretty cracks. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous, but it's true. And again, a quick practice on a bit of scrap paper. Just, you know, you, you'll find patterns that are pleasing to your eye. And you'll find wonky lines that you maybe don't like so much. So that's the start of it there. And then... As I did with the, the wood and the mortar around the bricks, I'm just going to thicken up some of these lines and it's the ones that I've made that rough sort of loop, circular shape, whatever you want to call it. I'm just making those thicker because that's what's going to give the picture and the, the actual texture some depth. So I'm going to fade out a little bit as well. Just as I, as I thicken the line up, I'm going to pull up on the pressure. That doesn't have to be exact. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my darker colour. And where I've drawn that first line, I'm just going to very lightly darken that edge down. And this is just to add a bit more depth. Because the, the crack is obviously going into the surface. So the further, the further down it goes, the darker it's going to be. It's a bit like looking into a hole. You know, the deeper the hole then the darker it looks, doesn't it? Until you get to a point where you just can't see anything at all. 
And then with our darkest colour, I'm just going to, you want a sharp pencil for this last line. And you're just going to, literally just one line, round that inside edge. And there we go and you can start to join them up you know you could you could have this crack could maybe come down here it's found its way down here and you can start again just that sort of loose shape and draw off your your wee spidery lines like so really simple really straightforward i know i keep saying i've said that a lot during this video i'm not going to say that anymore I'll just thicken these up really quickly. Go in with our darker pencil. Make that crack look a bit darker. And then with your darkest pencil, that one line round that inside edge, like so. And if you feel that they're sticking out too much and they are too prominent, again, if it's maybe in a background, Take your background colour again and just do what we've done before and just go back over it. You maybe want to leave this inside part a little bit lighter so that it looks as if it's, you know, sticking out a little bit more. And the other thing that you can do is you can add just a little bit on the inside. And again, that just gives it a bit more depth and that gives you a nice cracked surface. So there you have it folks, six textures that are really easy and straightforward to do that won't take you too long to master. Experiment with different colours and different pencil pressures to see what kind of effects you're going to get from them. So that's something for you to think about the next time you have got a colouring page. Grass, fur, pebbles, bricks, wood and crack. Hopefully you've got something out of this video and you've enjoyed watching, I hope you have. If you have and you like it, you know what to do. Thumbs up are always good. We like to grow the channel and we are very, very small. So thumbs up helps us bump up the rankings a little bit. If you've enjoyed this video, you can always subscribe as well by hitting the subscribe button. I do put out two videos a week, once on a Monday and once on a Friday. And the videos are a mixture of colouring pages, arty type techniques and drawing and also some art supply stuff as well. So if you're into all that kind of thing, feel free to come and join us again in the Colour Cave. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye for now.